to do a pet clipper trim on an English setter. This is Nigel, he's eight years old. Um, my husband likes to take him out to our rural property and let him run around. And um, since this is my husband's English setter, he asked me to clip all of his hair off in the spring so um, that he doesn't have to, when he comes home, do a lot of uh, bathing and clipping on him. Um, or clipping, brushing out, trying to get all the burdock and stuff out of his coat when he runs in the country. So um, I'll grow this out. This is all the winter growth. Um, that way he stays warm in the snow in the winter when he's outside playing. And uh, now for the spring, we're gonna clip him down. So I've already gone ahead and clipped his head, his ears, his throat. Um, and you can watch my other videos to see how to do that. I've already trimmed up his feet, his nails. And I've already carded, even though we're clipping it, I already carded out his jacket. So I went in and removed all that undercoat. He has been bathed and blow dried and I didn't towel his coat. So you can already see how when you don't towel it, it stays up and frizzy like this. So toweling does make a big difference. Um, I did already go in and trim his tail too, just like in my other video, I show how to do that. So uh, really what's all left to do is I'm going to clip his jacket a little shorter. Um, instead of taking the time to kind of go in and do a lot of blending or anything like that, we're just going to clip it short. And then I'm going to trim his feathering up. Um, I'm not going to shave the jacket all the way down with a 7 or 10 blade. I don't recommend that at all on an English setter. Um, personally, I just don't think it looks good. But um, this jacket helps keep them, you know, from getting sunburned in the summer. And um, it helps, uh, you know, if they're running through a lot of plants from getting scratched up. So they do need some of this coat on it. I just want to take some of the length off so it just doesn't look quite so messy. Okay, before I start uh, grooming Nigel, I just wanted to briefly go over what tools I'm using during this groom. Uh, so I don't have to stop during the groom to show you. So I have my clippers. I'm going to need a comb, a slicker brush. This is a 42 tooth thinning shears. Uh, this is a six or seven inch straight shears. You can use any length you want. And for clipper blades, I'm going to be using a 5F on his jacket. And uh, I won't be showing in the video, but uh, I'll be using a 10 blade on his ears and his head. Um, I'll be using a 30 blade on his foot pads. And I am actually using clipper comb attachments during the groom. Um, I am using a different clippers in my groom, but I wanted to show uh, the tools that you would probably buy to use on your English setter. So these uh, clipper blade attachments set over the 30 blade. So you do need a 30 blade. And uh, by going over the 30 blade, it allows you to get a longer cut on that clipper blade. So I have the 5F attachment, so that's comparable to that one. And then I have the one inch attachment. This will be for the feathering, and that'll leave it about an inch long. I like the clipper combs uh, versus the uh, blades because it kind of gives it a more blended sort of trim. It looks a little more natural than um, the clipper blade would get. Leaves it just a tad bit longer too when you use an attachment comb. So these are the tools that we're gonna be using. Okay, so we're gonna start clipping this back. And I am using um, my clipper blade attachment, which is this right here, but you could just use a regular clipper blade for this. And we're gonna go with the coat growth. And as I said earlier, I already shaved the top of his head, so we're just starting from uh, where I stopped that line before. We're gonna keep following the direction that the hair grows. You wanna to try to avoid going sideways and you certainly don't wanna go up this direction or you'll take it twice or even three times shorter than you mean to. Just follow the exact direction the hair grows. As I said earlier, his jacket has already been carted out. So we got all of the excess undercoat removed and that's an important step to do, even when you're shaving, 
to get that undercoat out. Otherwise, the coat isn't gonna lay nice and smooth because there's still a lot of coat left. I'm letting him sit because he is older um, and he doesn't need to be standing right now for me to clip this part of him. So this is something you can do with your dog too, is have him sit while you're shaving the neck and the back. After you've gone over it a few times with your clippers, you can take your slicker brush and back brush like I'm doing right now. And then go over it again with the clippers. This is just making sure that you're not missing any uh, sections of hair or some really long hairs that the clipper just keeps pushing aside instead of clipping. Some dogs are really sensitive going over their spine, especially if they're older or if they don't have a lot of uh, excess weight on them, which a lot of English setters don't, they can be very lean. One of the things you can do if they seem irritated going over their spine is uh, just gently take some of this hair and just pull their skin to the side and then shave that section that was sitting over the spine. Same with on this other side. All right, I'm gonna show you how to shave, um, since we've been doing the neck and the back, how to do uh, the shoulders, this upper forearm, and what to do around the bib. Now, if you wanna take your dog one length all over, um, you can just start shaving the bib hair off. I wanna leave it a little bit longer so it looks like he still has feathering. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, with a comb, I'm going to separate out where the bib starts and kind of help start create an imaginary line um, for my eye to see so I know where to clip. So we're gonna have this be the bib hair, and then I kind of know to shave there. So with that five blade, we're gonna start shaving over the point of the shoulder, and then down the front of that upper forearm. And same on the other side, we're gonna separate out where the bib hair starts. And shave over that point of the shoulder into the upper forearm. After you shave your bib, or the line where your bib starts, then you can come along the side and shave the side of the forearm. Remember to go in the direction that the coat grows. Some dogs get a, long, a lot of long hairs down the side of the arm, so you can kind of go through and just skim some of that off. Now, if you were to shave all the feathering off, you could just go ahead and start shaving that. When we're doing the side of the forearm here, if you're leaving the feathering, the feathering starts, here you can see the line, it's starting right here. So just be careful when you're shaving that forearm so you're not shaving into the feathering. Now I'm gonna show you how to shave the sides of the dog's chest and their abdomen here, their waist. So before while we were shaving the back, we were following the coat growth. And here you can see his hair is growing straight here. But once we start getting into the uh, side of the chest here especially, the hair starts growing more this direction. So you still want to shave the direction that the hair is growing. So you just have special attention to this area because if you start cutting down, you're going to get a lot of lines and it's going to look, um, you know, like the clippers went over it instead of looking a little more natural. So 
So to make sure I'm cutting with the hair growth, I just like to do a little bit of a section at a time here. And then I'm gonna pay attention to where that feathering starts. Um, some of this is really just long hairs. And if we start, if I just stop shaving about right here, it would start to look a little bit more like a, a Cocker Spaniel cut because his uh, feathering is all the way up on his side. And we don't really want that look. So doing a little section at a time very carefully, I'm gonna shave and then I'm gonna lift the tip of my clipper blade up off of the hair. And I'm still gonna go with the direction that the hair grows while doing this. This is a skill that can take a while to uh, kind of learn and perfect. But by lifting up off of the feathering, we're sort of blending into those longer hairs. And now that that hair is trimmed, you can really see the direction changes that the hair is starting to uh, grow into. It's started going from here and now it just drops almost straight down. So there you can see and I think I want to come down even just a little bit more. The English setter is uh, supposed to be, you know, moderately coated. They're not supposed to have a lot of heavy feathering. And uh, one of the reasons for that is uh, you want to be able to see, you know, the muscling of the animal. And if you have a lot of hair covering this, you hide a lot of that muscle, especially on the forearms and the sides in that area. So to prevent them from looking like a cocker spaniel, you just want to take some of this feathering down. Okay, now I'm gonna start trimming the uh, rear hind of the dog. And um, we've already shaved the top line up here in the direction the coat grows, so you can see that. Now this is another area like the uh, side of the, the chest and the abdomen here where the hair starts to change the direction that it grows. So it's best to just do a little bit of a section at a time. This area right here is especially tricky because start growing uh, different directions. So you have to be very careful and just pay attention to where you're clipping and where the uh, hair is growing. Now they have feathering in the back of the hind legs here. So I'm just going to shave down into where that feathering starts. You can start trimming into the tail, but you kind of want to stop here at this line. And I'll show you what we're going to do. But for now, stop uh, where it starts to transition from the, the body into just the tail. Now, if, you're leave, if you don't want any feathering, if you just want the dog one length all over, you can just go ahead and start shaving all of that. Normally, this feathering starts to come down over into this hawk hair here. So we don't want to shave that if we're leaving it. Just kind of skimming over where all this short hair is to just kind of get any extra long hairs out and even up that length. And then they have long feathering on the uh, front of the knee here and the leg. So we're just going to do our blending where we lift our clippers up and off of the hair into that long feathering. 
All right, so now we're gonna do the rear of the dog. And this is an area where it's okay to get it a little bit shorter, um, just for hygiene reasons, because you know they do sometimes get um, problems having going to the bathroom and they get a lot of feces stuck on their hair. So we're gonna lift the tail up and we're gonna shave down over the point of the hip. And just blend it into that feathering. If you don't want the feathering, just shave all of it. If you've uh, watched my tail trimming video, I already went and trimmed all of this under the tail, but you could take your clippers and trim that hair shorter there. To do the top of the tail, you could do um, about two finger lengths in on the top of the tail, and then down the sides. And then if you've watched my tail trimming video, you wanna go in with your thinning shears. And uh, with the scissors uh, parallel to the body here, go in under that hair and just make a cut with the thinning shears. You don't wanna do this with the straight shears. and then comb that hair that uh, got trimmed out. And that'll start to get some of these longer hairs here to lay uh, closer to the body. I'm gonna do a little bit down the sides of the tail too. Sometimes on these uh, setters, you really have to go in and even thin out hair all the way down the tail. If you feel like the tail just looks really bushy, just go in with your thinning shears and just keep uh, thinning out some of that hair. As long as you're not doing it on the uh, bottom of the tail or too far down the sides of the tail, then you won't have to worry about uh, cutting out the long hairs. But this hair on the top of the tail can get really long and bushy. And there's a lot of nerve endings on the tail and there's not much fat or tissue. So to use a thinning blade or to use a stripping knife on there, or carding blade and try to uh, remove it that way can be kind of painful or irritating to the dog. So that's how we get the tail to look a little less bushy. All right, so we finished shaving the back of the English setter with the five blade and we blended into the feathering as you can see here. So now this is all trimmed shorter and now we have the feathering left. Now, if you just want your dog one length all over, you could just take that five blade and just continue to shave all of this feathering off. If uh, you'd like the length of feathering your dog has now, you'd like to keep that, you can go in with your uh, comb here and just start, um, we're just gonna scissor the uh, feathering to just kind of even it up. So um, to do the leg, we're gonna gather up all the hair and then just trim any of that hair that falls below the foot pad. And then take your comb, scissor that out, and then you usually just make a diagonal cut into the foot there, and that's how you do the leg feathering. Here on the body, uh, he doesn't have a lot of feathering right now but you're gonna find their last rib, which is about right here. And this is where you're gonna start making a diagonal cut down toward the body. Then to do the uh, rear part of the body here, scissor that feathering. I'm gonna comb all this hair down and you're basically just gonna follow the uh, curvature of the leg.
he's a male, so um, he tends to pee on this feathering here, so it uh, tends to break off and thin out, as you can see. But to do this uh, corner here, we're gonna go to the last rib. That's where we started our cut before. And we're just gonna go in and make a diagonal cut. If you have a male, just be careful where you're trimming so you don't trim a sensitive area. To trim this rear hair and the hock hair, you just comb this down. Part on the back of the leg here and comb the hair behind the leg down. And then following your uh, line before from where you're trimming the leg, just make a straight cut across the hock able to come in there. And same with on the other side of the leg, just make a straight cut. The hair on the back of the leg, we usually don't trim as it's growing out, um, but you could go in and trim. Uh, a trick a hairstylist taught me was um, to always go in and kind of remove the ends of the hair because <clears throat> that's just usually damaged or um, split. And uh, if you just trim those long hairs, that'll usually help the hair lay together better. So it'll lay a little smoother and just look a little nicer. To do the hawk hair, I like to first go and trim any of the hair at the bottom of the hawk that falls past the foot pad again so that there's no hair touching the ground. If there's no hair touching the ground, then it's not gonna get as dirty as they're outside. Then you're gonna scissor all of that hair up. And then just make a diagonal cut. From the top of the hock into the uh, bottom of the foot here where we already trimmed. If you'd like that hair shorter, you can take it as short as you want to go. Especially if your dog spends a lot of time outside, this hair can get really dirty and messy. Then if we come around to the bib area here, it's the same as the hair on the rear. I'm not really gonna trim much. But you can just kind of go in and just kind of trim up the ends so that uh, you get all the uh, split ends or damaged hair up and that way it'll just lay nice and flat together. Traditionally, uh, we don't trim the hair on the ears. Um, you certainly can if you'd like. If you don't like having all that long hair there, you could shave the ear if you'd want. Um, you know, most setters, if they do grow a lot of hair, they still don't grow a lot of hair, like at the bottom of the ear here. So you could trim it. Um, if you just want it shorter, you could just take your scissors and just cut a line. Um, in other breeds, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll trim kind of following the outline of the ear. So I'd make a cut here and then go out to the tip and kind of make a reverse kind of triangle and then I'll just sort of round uh, the tip of it. So whatever you'd like to do, I already shaved the top half of the ear there. So um, I'm not going to trim it because I just like it to look long and untrimmed. Okay, so I've already shown how we scissor trim the feathering, um, but as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, this is my husband's dog, and when he takes him out to our rural property um, and lets him run around, he doesn't really want to have to come home and deal with all of the uh, plants and mud and stuff that's stuck in his feathering. Um, even though I'm the groomer and these are my show dogs, I still make my husband uh, take care of his dog. So um, I'm going to follow my husband's request and clip off all this feathering and we'll let it grow back for the summer. And by uh, spring this time next year, he'll probably have about this much hair left unless late summer we decide to uh, cut it off again, which a lot of times we do. Great, Nigel. So I'm going to use my one inch attachment blade and this is the longest attachment you can get for clipper blades. But if you wanted, just scissor this hair really 
short, um, like I showed earlier, I just took the, ed the ends off, but you could go in and just scissor it almost short to the body. Um, but I just like the look of it when it's clipped. So just like I did earlier with his side, we're gonna follow the direction that the hair grows and uh, that's the same for the feathering. So we're gonna start shaving down the side here. And just clip it off. Say bye, Nigel. Say bye to your hair. He likes having all that hair gone. All right, to clip underneath. I'm gonna lift his leg off, up off the table. When you're doing the leg, it gets a little tricky up in the elbow because they do have a skin fold there and that clippers can, if that skin fold gets between the clipper blades, the teeth, it'll cut the skin. So you need to be very careful when you're trimming that area. So usually when I shave the armpit area, I'll go this direction so I'm not catching any skin folds. The bib is nice and easy because we're just gonna go straight down the bib. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I already got uh, all of his feathering combed out and detangled and if you haven't done that yet if you're going to try to clip mats out and you want to use a longer blade it's not going to happen you need to have all of that matting and detangling done before you try clipping to do the back end of the dog i'm just going to shave the direction here that it grows Now to do under the leg, you're gonna lift the leg up off the ground. Be careful not to crank their leg up. Um, and Nigel is an older dog, so he does have some balance issues. So you might need to do this slowly. I hold him by the hock. And then slowly raise the leg so they have time to adjust their balance if they need to. And then I'm gonna just shave straight across that inner thigh and get all of this feathering underneath. Your dog is intact, you need to be very careful in this area. Sometimes with the uh, females, I'll actually go in and shave around that vulva with a 10 blade. That just helps keep it a little cleaner and since we're trimming anyway, uh, it's not very noticeable. If your dog is intact and still has testicles, you might need to use a 10 blade to shave around the uh, testicles as well if there's any matting. Most uh, males won't let you uh, detangle that area. All right, then just shave the uh, front of the leg here. Now here's a very common, this is the tuck up in a dog, and this is a very common area to cut a dog with the clippers. So the tuck up is a fold of skin. And it's really easy for that fold of skin to get between the teeth of a clipper blade and get cut. So when you're shaving the tuck up, try to avoid going like this and cutting across that tuck up or you might accidentally cut it. The best way to trim that area is again to lift the leg up and trim along the side of it. Because when you have this leg picked up, then the tuck up is up and stretched against the side of the leg. This show is, uh, this is called a sanitary cut. Most professional groomers do this on every dog they groom, unless you request otherwise. 
Um, but we're gonna go in with a 10 blade and we're gonna shave out this whole inner groin area. So if you have a female, you go in and shave out uh, the vulva. If it's a male, intact male, we gently shave around the testicles. If you're leaving the feathering, you still could shave out this area, especially if your dog is prone to getting tangles in that inner groin, inner thigh area. Um, it's nice to use a 10 blade to trim that out. Um, it's just gonna be noticeable with this long hair because there's gonna be a gap in the hair where you shaved. But that does help keep them cleaner and then they're not getting tangling there. And then they're not uh, peeing on their hair either because you can go in and shave this hair right in front of the penis here. That way when they uh, lift their leg to pee, all that hair is gone, so they're not peeing on it. Okay, so after you've gone through and done all of your clipper work, uh, you can go through with uh, your scissors and kind of even it up. So I'm gonna just take my brush and brush it down and uh, get any uneven hairs or any longer hairs that the uh, clippers may have left. And as you can tell, I went in and did a sanitary trim underneath in his groin area. So I'm just gonna carefully trim this hair. And I'm just rounding up what hair is left so it follows the outline of the chest. To do the leg hair, Again, I'm gonna brush this hair down, trim whatever hair falls past the foot pad. And then you're gonna pull the legs straight out and brush all of the hair down. And just even up. up in the armpit too. And we'll come around and do the rear leg. This is real similar to um, trimming it. <clears throat> before when it was longer. I'm just gonna brush all the hair down and follow the uh, curvature of the leg. Brush this hair up and trim up any unevenness.
he um, had a laceration on his foot and so I uh, had to have stitches and get shaved. So um, normally there'd be more hair here, but I would just comb down and trim anything that falls past the foot, but we'll just even up what's there. Then brush all of that hair out. We're gonna leave it longer out here at the hock and then trim closer into the foot. Or if you feel like that hair tends to get real messy and dirty often and you just want it short, you can just scissor it short too. Okay, we'll just keep uh, brushing to find any long hairs that we may have missed. And then to uh, trim this hair on the uh, bib, uh, similar to how we trimmed it on the rear, just kind of brush it up and uh, just trim any extra long hairs that the uh, clippers may have missed. In my video on how to trim the English setter head and neck, I did show how to um, go through with a thinning shears and thin this out. So I'll just do a quick sort of reminder. Um, after you've shaved this, a lot of times, as you can tell, I don't really need to do a lot of blending, but uh, if you'd like to go through, you can go through with your thinning shears. You can just sort of blend the length from where we shaved with the 10 blade into the five blade. And then I'm going to take my comb and back brush, and I'm just going to blend some of the length here from where we shaved uh, using the five blade into the 10 blade on the head. Okay. That's just how we do a little bit of blending from uh, the different lengths that we shaved.